Now, Matthew's gospel, as I said, is the most intricately structured of any of the four gospels. It begins with a nativity story. And it ends with the death and resurrection story. But in between, as you can see from the back of your handout, I should hear paper slipping. In between this beginning and ending, Matthew's gospel divides neatly into five segments. Five books, if you will. Five blocks of material. Each of which has two parts. So you see the diagram, top and bottom. Those go together. One, two, three, four, five. Each of the two parts has a very distinct pattern. Stories and then teachings. Events and then words of Jesus. These five blocks are Matthew's creation in the sense that he has ordered these. They are thematically coherent books of Jesus' thought and teaching. And there's a very interesting little clue that you can catch as you read it. At the end of each block of teaching appears virtually the same sentence. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these words. Okay, are you with me? Five blocks. Jesus does some stuff, then Jesus gives a big speech. The speech ends with Jesus finished talking. Then he does some more stuff, then he talks. Jesus finished talking through five sequences. So you can see there are five books of teaching. The Sermon on the Mount, the missionary speech, the parables of Jesus, the church discourses, and the apocalyptic discourse. What else in Jewish tradition has five books? The Torah. The law written by Moses. The first five books of the Jewish Bible. The Torah, the most sacred, central part of Judaism. Matthew's Jesus is a Jewish lawgiver. The last and greatest. Who comes to teach a final revelation of God's law. To bring into being the kingdom of God. 